Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday night. Just got home from Bible study. Hopefully you were able to watch it and enjoy it. I think it was a pretty good Bible study, pretty informative. Uh, it's 1147, so it's almost midnight. Just walked in maybe five, seven minutes ago. Um, we did a part five of the book of Daniel, and uh, it was the part where King Nebuchadnezzar is no longer in the story and his son is king and the writing on the wall. That's what that saying says. You know that saying like, oh, you know, there's you see the writing on the wall that it came from actually that story in the book of Daniel. And um, so we were reading through that and um, talking about different things and people ask different questions. And I, I like that, man. I like the fact that now, there was one brother, um, he asked a few questions, and I'm glad that he feels free to ask because we really like when the Bible studies are are, are um, interactive like that, you know. I do always tell people that if I don't answer your question, um, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just we never want to derail from the subject of the Bible study, you know, Um I've done that before years ago, and I've learned to keep it from derailing because if it derails, then every Bible study will get derailed every single time, you know. And we don't want that. We want to, you know, the Bible says there is order in the church. So, you know, as long as the questions pertain, at least in a direction, but the person that asked questions, they were good questions, and I was able to answer them quickly and keep it moving, so... That was really cool. I, I do like that. I do like the interactive, and um, so we can have a Bible study that's interactive, and I think it makes for a great study, you know. And um, so, you know, but other than that, uh, you know, we always have a good time, man. You know, we get to see our church family, and you know, today is um. <laughs> Today, sorry, man. Hey, it is what it is. I'm not editing that out. Like I said, it's uh, now 11.50. Uh, and I got up early today. I think I got up at 6.15. So that's early for me. Uh, today is the last 10 minutes of the 7th of June, which is uh, my daughter's birthday. Uh, one of my daughters. She's the one that was in the movie Always With You, the Christian movie that I did. And um, she's starting a new job all week, so she had to work, you know. And uh, but I did get to message her and wish her a happy birthday, you know. My daughter. For, no, I was telling them that it was my daughter's birthday. Did you get to message her after all? The family post. No, no, so it's it the last 10 minutes of her birthday and she had to work because she started that new job on Monday. So she's in orient, orientation, you know, but, you know, I didn't get to see her, but I did get to message her and uh, that's my middle daughter. So, uh, yeah, really proud of her. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, I had a great Bible study. Uh, good fellowship after it's always good fellowship and you know it's different now because um, uh, Lily doesn't have to go to school she's on summer break so it's finally given us a break to get back to a little bit of normality and uh, so but we still had to go early today uh, we're still uh, dealing with the the new building and whatnot so we had to be out there at 10 o'clock anyways but it, it's fine you know, we're used to, um, even back before um, we had Lily, we were always going all day on Wednesdays anyway. So it kind of felt normal. You know, huh? remember we would just go because we knew we had to do stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you got a lot of um, curriculum for the kids. Uh, yeah. Thanks to um, our Grace Church in, in Livermore. You know, that was a, a really good blessing. Uh, I wanted to talk about this scripture. Mm -hmm. I don't have my Bible. It's over there, but I got my phone, so I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Huh? 
It's easier because I'm right here. And this is actually, I know you're going to say that I always say this, but for reals, this one is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. And uh, it is Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. And um, Jeremiah, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I've mentioned this before, that Jeremiah um, was a prophet that... I like to use Jer let me say this. I like to use Jeremiah for this example because a lot of times people think that a preacher or pastor has a choice of what they preach. And many times I think I had a choice, or especially early on, I thought I had a choice of what I wanted to preach. Like as if I would be like, hmm, what do I want to preach this Sunday? What do I want to preach? And you know what? Uh, the church has been kind of, you know, in a slump. So let me let me uh, make an exciting sermon so they can kind of, you know, revive them. And um, sometimes I would think that early on, and man, the Lord checked me quick because here's the thing: is that when somebody is truly preaching, teaching the Word of God, it has nothing to do with what you want to do or what you want to say. It's more about saying what the Lord is telling you. To say that that's that's why we preach. And Jeremiah um, was born in a time when God had already said God had already sent prophet after prophet after prophet warning the people, and they didn't listen. He would tell them, tell them to repent, tell them to turn back to me, tell them to get right with me. And by the time Jeremiah was born, it, it was already the end. They had killed the prophets, driven them off. And God says, I'm calling you to be a prophet. And uh, I want you to tell them that I'm not giving any more chances. My wrath is coming. Now, can you imagine? Jeremiah couldn't help it. Jeremiah had no choice of what he wanted to talk about. God will straight up tell him, I want you to tell them this. And Jeremiah would be like, I can't tell them that. They're going to hate me. Uh, I didn't ask you if they're going to hate you. I told you, this is what I want you to preach. So when he would preach, they were really, really harsh sermons. Um, and it got to the point where the king hated him. It got to the point where the officials hated him. And then there was these other prophets, and they hated him too. You know, because the prophets were saying something completely different. And and that became an issue and a problem because, see, the king surrounded himself with these prophets. And they were telling him good things. And a lot of times, see, just like in America, we think that just because the majority says it's right, oh, it must be right because the majority says it's right. Well, this is the imagine the king was surrounded by 20 or 30 prophets and they're all telling him, hey, king. I mean, not Jeremiah, the king of Israel was surrounded by 20 or 30 prophets. And they're all telling him, man, you're going to be the greatest king of all. God is saying that he's going to prosper you. God is saying that he's going to grow your territory. God is saying, so you got 20 or 30 prophets telling the king this. And here comes Jeremiah. And he says something opposite. He tells the king, the Lord's going to take away your throne. The Lord says that because of that you continue to to worship these idols, that God is going to take away your reign, that God is going to destroy Jerusalem, that God is so. The king got upset because he's like Jeremiah. Do you do you ever have anything nice to say? Can you imagine how frustrating that is for Jeremiah going back to God? Like Lord, can you just give me a good sermon to tell them? And God's like, I have nothing good to say to them. You're going to preach what I tell you to preach. Anyways, long story short, they threw him in the hole, in, in a well. Um, they put him in a like a birdcage and hung him in the middle of the city so everybody could make fun of him. They starved him up there. Uh, they, would, they would do all kinds of stuff to him. And finally, it got to the point where Jeremiah was like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. 
I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be everybody's laughing stock, everybody's punching bag, everybody's this, everybody's that. And Jeremiah's like, man, I'm done. And I said all of that to lay the foundation for my favorite verse. And um, I'm going to share you why this is my favorite verse. I don't know if I might have shared you this verse and told you it's my favorite verse, but I never really, really told anybody why. But in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, he says, If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. Um, let me read it in a little easier translation here. Uh, let's look at... Uh, I might as well just go to the message. It's been a while. And it says this. It says, if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in... That's really loud, brother. <laughs> Does he think he was whispering? He's like... <laughs> okay. If I say... This is in, in the message. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name... There is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. He was to the point, he reached a point where he says, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing in the Lord's name anymore. Because I, 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 I'm, I, I'm preaching what you're saying, God, and everybody hates me. You know, so you know what? I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing in your name. And then he says, but there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I'm weary with holding it in, and I cannot. He says, I, I, I don't want to say what you want me to say anymore. So I hold it in, and it feels like fire inside of me that I have to let it out. And, and I've often took this for different reasons and different things, you know. For instance, one thing is this. One thing is that the fact that he says, listen, I can't stop doing this because even though I try to stop, I can't help it. You know, I, 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 I don't want to preach anymore in his name, but it's a fire inside of me and I, I'm tired of holding it in and I have to let it out. And I've often told people, if you really called to preach, because I've had so many people say they're called to preach over the years. And this might sound harsh because I know some of you that have been telling me that you're called to preach are probably watching this. But uh, if you're really called to preach, you can't help it. You're going to find somewhere to preach, somebody to preach to. You know, you are not going to be able to hold it back. It is impossible. How do I know that? Because, and this is where the point of why this became my favorite verse, because I had already been serving the Lord for two years. No, 16 months when the Lord, yeah, I had been saved. And then I was in Sacramento County Jail for 16 months. And then I was in solitary confinement in Santa Rita. And I was sick and tired of being in the hole. I was sick and tired of feeling everything because I felt like I felt like being a Christian softened my heart. And by softening my heart, I was feeling the pain of being away from my children and from my family. And because my heart was so callous before that, I literally told God, you know what you say in the Bible that you take out my heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. Can you please give me my heart of stone back? Because this is too much for me. I just I just want my old heart back, and I promise you when I get out, I'll serve you, but I can't do it here because it hurts too much. It, 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 it's, it's, too, it's too much, and I just want that hard heart so I can just get through my time and not worry about nothing and, and not go against the grain. I'm just going to be a Norteño all over again, and I'm just going to go full force and do whatever it is I got to do, and then when I get out, then I'll serve you, God. You know, and... And this, it was at that time and that moment. And I remember, uh, I don't even remember who visited me. I remember my family visited me and I'm just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. 
you know, and I think for a few days, <laughs> for a few days, I actually stopped reading my Bible and I stopped praying because it hurt too much, you know, and then I, I, it got to the point where I couldn't sleep. It got to the point where I, I, I was uncomfortable. I, I would fidget. I, 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 could, I try to read a book or just a regular novel and I couldn't read it. Uh, I would get thrown off. I, I would try to write letters and, and I, I couldn't write letters. And, and, and it's like, it, it was at that time in that moment where I couldn't take it that I opened up my Bible and guess what scripture I read. You guessed it. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse nine, where he says, I don't want to mention you anymore but I couldn't hold it. And it was like fire inside of me and I had to let it out. And I remember I got so mad <laughs> that I told God it ain't fair. Like a little kid having a tantrum, you know, cause he wouldn't give me my heart of stone. He wouldn't give it to me even if I wanted it. And I angrily wrote a sermon. I, I, I said, what, so I'm supposed to preach? Who am I preaching to? I'm sitting here in solitary confinement. What am I preaching to the walls or something? Like I was being like that with God. And finally I said, fine, I'll preach. Okay, I'll write a sermon. I'll send it to my mom and dad. There, there's my, there's my congregation. Now let me sleep. And, and I wrote the ver uh, I wrote a sermon that is still somewhere in my parents' house. And you know what happened that night? I fell asleep. And the next day, I felt antsy again. And in the moment I wrote a, a, a sermon, I relaxed and I slept again. And I realized and I learned a lesson that when I gave my life to the Lord back in February 5th, 2004, and I surrendered my life before. See, nobody that surrenders to into somebody's custody, nobody's in prison and says, Hey, officer, um, yeah, I changed my mind. I don't want to be here. Let me out. When you surrender, you surrender. You have given up your rights at that point. And when I gave my life to the Lord, the Lord took me at my word. And, uh, you know, so that's how I know that I was called because I continue to write sermons every single day that I was in solitary confinement and I mailed them to my parents and they would read them. I don't know if they were good or not, but you know, they were sermons nevertheless. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, even now, you know, guys, it doesn't stop. And, and I don't say it anymore. Like it's a bad thing. I embrace it. I embrace it because it's like God is continually speaking to me and God is crying out to his people. And, and he's, and he's saying like, he dumps a message on me and I have to release it. And I don't have a choice on what to talk about, I, you know, and I can't, I, I don't go in like, Oh, I'm going to give a, a happy one today or I'm going to give a sad one today, or I'm going to give, no, it just comes out the way it comes out and the way the Lord gives me. But, you know, I, I've always loved this verse, guys, and I just wanted to talk about it. And I love the fact that even though Jeremiah says, I'm not going to mention him, I'm not going to speak anymore in his name, within the same verse, he, then he says, but there's a, there is in my heart a burning fire, and there, it's shut in my bones, and I'm tired of holding it in. I'm weary of holding it in and I can't, you know, and um, whatever your calling is, you will know what it is. Maybe it ain't preaching, but whatever your calling is, it's going to bother you when you aren't walking in your calling. It's going to irk you. It's going to bother you. And a lot of times, there's somebody here is watching. You're constantly complaining because some type of ministry ain't going on in your church and you're always bothered by it. I want you to think this. Maybe it's bothering you because you're the one that's supposed to be doing it. It's quick to point out to churches like, oh, they don't have this. They don't have that. They don't. 
What if you're the one that's called that? Maybe that's why you're there. Maybe that's so, huh? Maybe that's why you're there, you know? And, uh, <laughs> it's easy to complain, real easy to complain, but to say, you know what, this bothers me so much. You know what, pastor, can I talk to you? Sister Sherry, can I talk to you or whoever your pastor is? You know, um, I noticed that you're lacking this in this church and this is my house too. And this is my family too. And this bothers me. And I think because the Lord is asking me to do it. So can we talk about this? You know, and I don't know who I'm talking to, man, but let the chips fall where they lay, you know. Um, like I said, I didn't even have a I didn't even have a title or agenda for this video. I literally hit record not knowing what I was gonna say. That's why I talked so long about um my day because I'm just like, Lord, I I don't have nothing. That's why I didn't even have my Bible here. You know, I just hit record, started talking because it's late. Um, so you know what? Just take it as a word from God, man, because I had no idea what I was going to talk about. So, all right, guys. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a great morning. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, say bye. Bye. All right, guys. See you guys later. And bam.